demanding justice for a man who was shot and killed in the community early Saturday morning by the security forces. However, the lawmen maintained the man was shot in a confrontation in which they recovered an illegal firearm. Dwayne Anderson reports. <laughs> Relatives and friends of John Y. Dixon mourn his death. The 27-year-old, also known as Tittyman, was killed around 5.50 Saturday morning during a joint police-military operation in the Fletcher's Land community in St. Andrew. Residents say the security forces were unprofessional and acted in an extrajudicial manner in the operation. He was still in his sleep and I opened the door and the police and the soldier come inside. They said to him, said, Titty man, if you have any gun in here, give it to me or I'm going to kill you. He said to me that, hey girl, move and turn your face down to the step and hold on your head. So I did, that, I did the same as what he said. And them shoot him and he fell on the ground and he cursed a bad word. The official report from the police say Dixon was shot in a confrontation with the security forces. A 9mm handgun containing six rounds were also recovered from the scene. His loved ones, though, contested that account. They said they find gun behind the dresser, where I don't know about that because the house is small. So even if they say that, I would have seen it. And they did not even show me when I was speaking to Indicom. And they didn't take any statement. Only Indicom take my statement. And they were questioning me about some long stuff, so, some other stuff. So I get my lawyer. He, he was innocent. And the gun wasn't in here at all. And they said, Titty man back gun off of them. And it's a whole of police and soldier in the house. Then if Titty man back gun off of them, why are those three shot one person give him? The matter has been reported to the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom. Welcome back to Primetime News and a special welcome once again to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. This evening, we are in mourning as our colleague and friend Michael Sharp has died. He'd been hospitalized at the University Hospital of the West Indies since March 14, but took his last breath early this morning. In Primetime News this evening, we take a look back at his life. Earl Moxham begins our coverage. Michael Sharp's early days in journalism included brief stints at The Gleaner, the Jamaica Information Service, and the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, JBC. Then he joined the staff of Radio Jamaica in March 1984. This came shortly after he had covered the Grenada invasion for the JBC. He was recruited for RJR by the company's managing director, Lester Spaulding. He had reason to be at the JBC, and he said, you know, Mr. Sharp would like you to come down to radio. And I thought of it. I went to a good friend um, and I said, you know, what do you think about that? And he said, yeah, man. He said, yeah, come on down. He distinguished himself covering Parliament for the next decade and in that capacity developed the five-minute review of each sitting of the House and Senate in the feature Inside Gordon House. Welcome to Inside Gordon House, focusing on the parliamentarians, their decisions and how these affect our lives. Michael Sharp made it to Port of Spain in 1990 to report on the attempted coup against the government of Prime Minister A.N.R. Robinson. The Prime Minister was released at 1.20 when he was escorted to a Red Cross vehicle by one of his ministers, who still remains in captivity, and by one of his captains. He served as deputy news editor for RJR in the 1990s and also hosted a nighttime talk show, Sharp Talk. That show served as an outreach vehicle for many disadvantaged persons who brought their needs and concerns to him. It led to various fundraising efforts to alleviate some of those needs and an initiative to send some kidney patients to Cuba for treatment. The airwaves belong to the people. And it strengthens them when you use it for them and not for yourself. After the acquisition of JBC TV, renamed TVJ, he served briefly as head of television news before the radio and the television newsrooms were merged. He co-anchored primetime news on TVJ with Doreen Samuels for more than a decade. At the time of his passing, he was news operations manager at Jamaica News Network, part of the RJR Gleaner Group.
but he still had a presence on Radio Jamaica, being a relief host on the talk show Hotline and doing the morning traffic report once per week. Throughout his career, Michael Sharp credited the journalist Terry Smith for inspiring him to be the best he could be. Terry Smith taught me that I belonged as a journalist, a member of the Fourth Estate. We belong here and we must kill them with excellence. Those were the words that really harnessed my thoughts and my brains and caused me to deliver. Michael Sharp, dead at age 65. There is growing disquiet among some residents of Old Pera in St. Thomas. They say a fledging tourism opportunity has been taken away from them. However, former Member of Parliament, Pernell Charles, who is at the centre of the saga, says the business venture was infringing on his rights as a property owner and also violated environmental guidelines. Dwayne Anderson reports. What started out as a so-called hustle on a piece of land in Old Pera St. Thomas has descended into a police matter and a standoff between some residents and former Member of Parliament Pernell Charles. Residents explained to our news team that they were operating a camping and adventure business known as Outdoor Vibes on this property. This video they shared with us showed that business was booming. This man said he was employed to the business. Come together, clean up the place and get together with the community and the community eat, sal get salary a fight straight straight them get salary because me work there my sister work there my brother-in-law work there and the shop at night time we go and buy like food a little alcohol from the shop to out the night so the whole community help the community so but the residents soon found out that the land is owned by pernell charles Eventually, the founder of the enterprise got into contact with Mr. Charles, who gave the man permission to complete one last piece of business and then vacate his property. The former MP said he could not allow the camping enterprise to go much further because there were several issues, including an environmental worry. Where would that sewage go? So these are not things that could happen. Mr. Charles explained that soon after the venture closed, some unidentified elements started sending threats. They say, we were working on a property that is not yours. And you make the man gone and you're going to see. Within the next 24 hours, fire was burning in my, on my property. Mr. Charles says he has reported the suspected act of arson to the police. He showed us the cane fields that were burnt. Mr. Charles said those residents who were earning from the unauthorized camping project must contact him if they want new opportunities. I'm now planting cassava and pumpkin and melon and the property, particularly where they burned down. Come, come. I have a job for you. I have work for you. They don't want that work. They want a Roman jump up which I don't have to offer. As for those who destroyed his fields, Mr. Charles is talking tough. Yeah, you did. You can't burn me out. This sort of bad man business, we're going to burn out Colonel Charles. You're on a wrong mission. The former MP also stressed that the area is not unclaimed. He said the piece of land was disconnected by erosion from the wider property he owns. Mr. Charles, in the meantime, said the property will bring great opportunities to the people in the area in the near future. This property is slated to be the eastern tourism sector, the Negril of the East. There was an airstrip here before I came, golf course and hotels. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. She has to go. The People's National Party Disciplinary Committee will be recommending expulsion for the woman who police say made baseless claims of misconduct against its General Secretary, Dr. Dayton Campbell. Police on Sunday said after their probe, which included interviewing the woman, they have found no basis on which to proceed. Dr. Dayton Campbell, in the meantime, is pursuing legal action. Giovanni Dennis reports. It is possibly the worst thing that you could have, you know, um, put against somebody's character. Dr. Dayton Campbell on sexual misconduct allegations made against him. 
On Sunday, the police ended their investigation. In a release, it said, after extensive investigations into the claims that were made by Karen Cross via social media against Dr. Campbell, the police have found no basis to the allegations that were made. Neither Miss Cross nor anyone else provided anything that could establish the allegations as credible. As such, the investigations into this matter has come to a natural end. Dr. Campbell, though happy for the conclusion, contends. In Jamaica, it is way too easy for somebody to tarnish somebody's reputation. You, you go to bed one night, you wake up the next morning with some allegations swirling about you, and um, people just run with it. It's not something that you would wish on your worst enemy. It, it's not a good feeling. I mean, to know that you have not done something, to know that something is against your nature, it is not a possibility that it could be true, because that's just not something that you would even contemplate. He insists internal party politics was the motivation for what he describes as an attack on his character. All of this is because they're trying to get me out as general secretary of the party because they want to put forward a challenge and I, I assume that they think that I'm standing in their way. So if you listen to every single communication coming out of them is that he should leave as Jensen. Dr. Campbell is now pursuing legal action indicating that his legal team has filed a defamation suit in the Supreme Court. I want to, to push the matter through the courts to ensure that we make an example out of this so it does not happen to you or any other person that is out there in the society that an individual can just get up and put baseless accusations against them. In the meantime, the Disciplinary Committee of the People's National Party will also take further actions. John Juno is the chairman. We have absolutely no alternative but to, as the Disciplinary com Committee, conclude that this is activity that is prejudicial to the interests of the party and to take the appropriate action or to recommend to the executive the appropriate action, which in my view must include expulsion from the party. And this should be for the person, in this case Ms. Karen Cross, who made the claim? Without a doubt. Giovanni Dennis, TVJ News.